Hey everyone, welcome to the Inside Scoop. I'm CNET's Cara Siboy, joined by senior writer Seth Rosenblatt. And Seth, we're in the middle of Mobile World Congress right mm -hmm. now in Barcelona. And Google has a, an interesting offer that's starting to bubble up over there. It's yes. called uh, Project Tango. Project Tango. It's perfect for Barcelona. Tell us a bit more about that. So Project Tango is a really interesting uh, new 3D mapping tool for mobile phones. And it's based on a new processor that allows the phone to see the world render it so that the phone can understand it and then spit it back out on your screen in a way that you can understand it all in the blink of an eye. All right, sounds cool, but mm. how and why would I ever use this? Sure. This could be really, really important for people who are vision impaired, um, helping them cross streets, helping map the interior of buildings as they're walking, as they're moving through a new building for the first time. It could tell them this is a wall, here's the door, here's the elevator that you're looking for. Um, this also has gaming implications to be able to turn a real world space, especially an indoor space, into a game, again, in the blink of an eye. Um, and of course, it has you know, a lot of fun implications too. You can map your room simply by waving your phone around and then you can go to Ikea and get whatever furniture you need. <laughs> so that's what I'm picturing. You're going to hold your phone and is it through the camera? That's how mm -hmm. we, we pick up? Through the camera, yep. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just to be clear, this mm -hmm. is not available immediately. This is not available immediately, but uh, uh, the CEO of the company that makes the chip that's partnered with Google has told me that this is coming in the coming quarters. This isn't something five years down the line. This is maybe two years down the line, if not sooner. And it, do you feel like Google is doing this out of pressure to what exactly? To just develop their camera app even further or mm -hmm. to compete? I think this is Google's attempt to do a lot of different things. Um, the, it comes from an interior group at Google that they picked up from Motorola that has uh, roots in DARPA. So they're really interested in pushing what the technology can do. But of course, Google is obviously looking at this from uh, its traditional wheelhouses and it's saying, oh, well, this is mapping. Google does really well with mapping. Indoor mapping has been something that's been challenging and difficult for not just Google, for everybody in the, in the mapping space. So for them to get a leg up, especially on something like this, is phenomenal. I guess you can see how it could also be paired and partnered with all sorts of other apps, mm -hmm. you know, to offer what 3D models of the inside of shopping malls, for example, Absolutely. Or, or stores. You know, you go into a bookstore, where do you find that specific book? Exactly, exactly. To go into, especially like a used bookstore, to use your example, and to know exactly where the fiction is or the cookbooks are, because you know, used bookstores are all different. So something like that could have a lot of very basic but very helpful applications. And now I'm seeing the partnership between this and Google Glass. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you didn't even have to hold up your phone. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if it's tied to glass, if it's tied to other wearables, uh, the implications are really exciting, I think. So the fact that this project even exists, mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out, you expect big news in the coming in, months? In the, I would say probably within, within two years, if not sooner. Um, and, and the fact that they're working with existing phone makers, they're working with Google and Google Android, and they're working with chip makers, uh, this isn't something where they're going to compete with existing chip makers. This is an entirely new kind of, of hardware chip. So again, this is going to change a lot of things for a lot of different industries. Anything else getting you really excited out of a Mobile World Congress? You know, there is one interesting thing, and that is the, this push at Mobile World Congress, especially this Mobile World Congress, to develop smartphones for emerging markets, for the developing world. Um, Microsoft and Nokia just released their Nokia X, and that's a, uh, a version of Android that runs Microsoft services that's aimed, again, at people who've never had smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, and Firefox OS from Mozilla, the people who make your Firefox browser, have come out with a $25 smartphone. Very wow. basic, They're very doing simple. Hardware. But they are working with partners. Um, and they've come up with some uh, very low-end hardware for people's first smartphones because currently we've got about two billion people on the internet and all these vendors are looking at where the next two billion are coming from and it's going to be smartphones. Neat. Great mm. to hear about some of the less publicized news out of Mobile World Congress. Good yeah. stuff. Samsung who? <laughs> Seth Rosenblatt, I'm Cara Suboy. Thanks for watching the Inside Scoop.